Hello, my friends at the United Steel Workers Civil Rights and Human Rights Convention. This is your brother, the Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II. I'm president of Repairers of the Breach and co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival. Let me first say a word of thanks to our friend and brother, Leo Gerard, and his many, many years of serving as your president. His legacy is powerful and tremendous. And Leo, we thank you. I thank you personally for befriending me and for being a great supporter. And we really don't say you're retiring. You're kind of realigning yourself. Because in the spiritual tradition, those who have served become elders of the movement so that they can continue to give advice and counsel to those that are yet on the front lines. Also, I want to welcome Tom Conway to your new leadership role at the helm of this powerful union, the United Steel Workers Union. Thank you for all that you have done and, and we just pray for you in the future for what's coming and knowing that you will be a tremendous servant leader. And of course, to my brother, Fred Redmond, your vice president, who's been like a brother to me. We've had many conversations and councils. Uh, we have traveled, I've met him across this country and he has a tremendous legacy. Thank you, Fred. And also to our dear she hero, Shiro as they say, our sister hero, Roz Pellis, who's there with you and who will be addressing you. I wish I could be there. On tomorrow, uh, hundreds of clergy, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Unitarians will come and march down Pennsylvania Avenue to deliver a prophetic indictment and moral impeachment upon uh, this president and the president's administration. There is a scripture in the Bible that says there comes a time you can no longer send messages. Jeremiah 22, you have to go down to the royal palace and tell and warn the leadership to stop hurting the poor, stop hurting workers, stop hurting immigrants, stop hurting children, stop hurting women, and stop endorsing policies that literally murder people's lives, dreams, hopes. And so we're going tomorrow in full vestment, we're going. Uh, we are reminded of what even Langston Hughes said, the steel of freedom does not stain. St freedom is strong like steel. And we must always stand up for freedom and justice and love. And then right after that, next week, the Poor People's Campaign, we're hosting the Poor People's Moral Action Congress. First time in the history of this country, poor people, religious leaders, impacted people, advocates coming together in our own Congress to address the issues of systemic racism like voter suppression and systemic poverty, the 140 million poor low wealth people in this country, 62 million workers who work every day without living wages when without a union, health care, environmental devastation, and the military industrial complex and war economy and the false moral narrative of religious nationalism that says somehow if you care just about prayer in the schools and be against women and for tax cuts and for guns, that somehow that's a godly position when in fact, over and over, more than 2,000 times, the scriptures tell us that our deepest concerns ought to be for the workers and the poor and the least of these and the uninsured and the immigrants and the children and the, those that are on the margins of life. And our own constitution says the first duty is to establish justice, provide for the common defense, and promote the general welfare of all people and to ensure domestic tranquility. We are coming together in this moral fusion movement. We're releasing a powerful moral budget to say it is not scarcity in this country why people aren't paid what they should be paid and aren't insured as they should be insured. It's not the scarcity of resources, it's the scarcity of moral commitment. And then we're having a major hearing before the budget committee where not me and others, but workers and impacted people will challenge our, our legislators and our congressperson to hear their stories and to change the direction of this country. And then we're announcing it's for 6 2020, June 20th, 2020, 2020 vision for the call for a mass poor people's assembly and moral march on Washington, where all of us, poor and impacted people, workers, religious leaders, and others will come together and the stage will be built for people to stand on that stage. Workers like steel workers, along with people from Alabama and Appalachia, to not only tell their stories to the nation, 
but to challenge us to address these five interlocking injustices of systemic racism, systemic poverty, lack of health care, environmental devastation, the war economy, and the false moral narrative of religious nationalism. Together we must stand. Together we must stand. And I'm so thankful that I know United Steelworkers will be right there standing with us as we shift the narrative, as we register people for the movement who vote, as before the, the conventions in 2020 and right after the primary, we lay down an issue platform that calls all of us to be concerned about the moral economic health of this nation. We must stand together. We must call 100 million people that sat home and did not even vote the last time to come out. Many of them didn't vote because they never heard their issues. They heard about the middle class and the wealthy, but they did not hear about poverty. They did not hear us dress, address, candidates address voter suppression, which allows most of the people who get elected who are against labor unions and against raising wages, they get elected because of racialized voter suppression, especially in the South. And if we break those things open, it will liberate workers, white, black, native, Asian, and Latino. It's our time to move together. And so I want to thank you that something is happening like happens in the process of making steel. You all know what I'm talking about. When you make steel, you melt it before it hardens. You melt it down in the fire and you remove the impurities. Racism is an impurity. The lack of unions is an impurity. The lack of living wages is an impurity. The lack of health care is the imp an impurity. Attacking our Latino brothers and sisters and other people of color is an impurity. Attacking women is an impurity. Cutting funds for the poor and school system is an impurity. Hurting our environment is an impurity. And lying about what really is a moral agenda is an impurity. And so we must raise the temperature of our protests the temperature of our speaking out, the temperature of our voting, the temperature of our standing together. And we must come together like steel, like steel. We must have steel in our spine, steel in our consciousness, steel in our hearts, because the steel of freedom never stains. And we must, as Langston Hughes said, take back our mighty dream again. I'm so glad to be a part of the movement with you. So glad that you are part of the movement with us. Thank you for all you do. And please hear Roz Pellis today, who is a tremendous voice for truth and liberation. God bless you and thank you so much.